In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the demo of Wix forward slash React Native Keyboard Input to work. So this is the readme.md on the GitHub page. It has these demos. These are GIF images. I'm going to show you how to get the, this to work on both iOS and Android. We're going to be going through these instructions down here. It has an Android part and it has an iOS part, but there's more that we need to do than is mentioned here. So please watch this video to find out how that's done. So I'm in a React Native project, and I just verified that it works in both iOS and Android. It's pretty basic. I'm going to copy this command. Paste, and run the command. It's doing, okay, it's done. I'm going to start with the Android part. So just to put this in android slash app slash build dot gradle so I can copy this code more open Android studio I need to open a new one okay demo react native project and it's opening so this is the project now I'm gonna go in here and it said android app build dot gradle okay so one trick that got me there are multiple build dot gradles so make sure we get the right one android app build dot gradle it's not this build.gradle because it's not in the app folder. Okay, app, this build.gradle, it's this one. Okay, and I'm just going to paste it at the bottom. But if we notice, we already have dependencies here, so we should put all the dependencies together. Next, it says update your Android forward slash settings.gradle and it gives us this code. So I'm going to copy the code. Okay, I copied the code already. So let's go to Android Studio settings.gradle this one. This is Android forward slash settings.gradle. Looks like it's a pretty short file, but put this in there. In your main application.java add to get packages list. Okay? So this part is a little bit more tricky, a, a lot more tricky. So let me show you what you have to do. Let's copy the code, Android Studio. First of all, we need to find that file. It does not give us a path to get to the file. So let me show you how you get to that file. So we're in our project. Let's go to Android. Then we need to go to App, SRC, Main, Java, Com, Demo, or whatever. This might not be demo for you, but it's one of these two. Uh, it was main application.java. So it is main application.java. So that's how you get to it. It's a little bit hard to find. So what do we do with the code? So here's the code we have that they gave us. And first of all, I don't like this dot dot dot. There's actually a whole bunch of code right there. All right, now you can actually see that code. Apparently, there are actually new lines there. Let's go ahead and show those new lines. So this will go up with all the rest of the imports. This is an import. So take the import and put it at the top with all the rest of the imports. So this is already in here somewhere, right? See, see, so this this function here is actually this function here. So you don't need to put the function again. You already have the function. This function, okay, this as list, it can take multiple parameters and it makes them into a list. So what you need to do is put this here and uh, okay. okay but this won't work and let's go look at this comment see this comment this equals Android application object okay in this context this refers to the react native host since this does not refer to the application and we need this to be the Android application object you can actually call the get application member function. The member, the method, get application. Let me show you where get application is coming from. I went to this source file here. So this, this is uh, some class. See what class we're in? React Native Host. So the React Native Host has a member called mApplication, which is the application object. 
you can actually get the application from it by just calling the get application function if you have access to protected members. I think we do. Delete this code down here. Now let's do the iOS steps. So it says in Xcode, drag both that file and that file from your node modules to the libraries folder in the project navigator. So I'm going to open Xcode, and the way I open Xcode for my project, I go to the iOS folder, and I go to demo.xcodeproj. Demo is the name of my project. So it opens Xcode. The project navigator is this right here, and here's the libraries folder. So to get those two files from the node modules, I have node modules open right here. They are in these two folders here. One of them is one folder, one's in the other folder. So let's start with this folder. You need to go to lib iOS, and there's the file. It says to drag it in, so let's do that. There, now it's done. The second file you need to drag in there is in this folder, lib, and there it is. So drag it in, and there it is. You want it to appear there. Now, if you drag it in wrong, it will actually appear right here. You don't want it right there. Okay, you want it to appear next to this one. Okay, so drag it onto the libraries and make sure your cursor appears right here. Let's look at the next step. Add that and that to your app target linked frameworks and libraries. So, one thing that got me these files do not actually exist on your file system. Well, they do, but they're wrapped inside of some Xcode proj. So let me show you how to get to this. Go to Xcode. Click on the name of your project here. Now just click again. There it is. Okay. Scroll down. Make sure in general. Scroll down. Scroll down. And linked frameworks and libraries. Click the plus button. And find the ones it asked for. Probably this one. Let's hit the add button. There it is. And we look, the other one was lib rct custom input controller dot a. So let's get that one. There it is. And click add. So now I have those two linked. If we look over here, it's got some more stuff. Don't worry about this stuff. So, once you've configured either iOS or Android or both, it would be nice to actually see the demo that they provide working on that operating system. So I'm going to get the demo working. So I'm going to clone down this repository because the demo is in this demo folder. And I want that folder, so I want to clone this using git. So click the clone button, get this URL. Okay, I think I got the URL. So I'm going to go over here. I'm not going to do it in that folder. Git clone URL. All right, so I'm going to go into that. I made a new folder called React hyphen native hyphen keyboard hyphen input. Go into that folder. Open the folder using my finder. And I'm going to go into the demo folder. So the demo consists of these four things. This one just has two pictures in it. These files, I mean, it's not that much code, but it, it was very difficult for me to get this to work while I'm making a video. So I'm going to copy those four things into my project. So this is the project I was using. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it... I don't know, demo. Go into demo and paste those files. Uh oh, it won't let me. Uh, okay, I got this, I got this. Do you want to copy res? Please copy. Okay. So now I have those source files. Let's look at this file here. This is the main file. It's got some code in it. 
They got some styles in it in the code, okay. So these two things, okay. I don't have this installed and I don't have this installed. So it will fail if I have those in here. But it's pretty easy to actually just get rid of those. You make this one into a text input, which by the way you need to import up here. And you can get rid of this. This one, you just make it into a view. Then you can get rid of this. Okay, so now that I have those two libraries that I don't have installed removed, let me uh, link this into my main app. So this is my main file, app.js. Uh, so I used expo to create this project, but then I immediately ran expo eject. So it is not in expo right now, but it was created with expo. And whenever I try to use React Native without expo, it structures this a little bit differently. But all I need to do is modify this file. So I'm going to include the stuff from demo. They named it Awesome Project, I believe. Oh, okay. Got slash demo slash uh, demo screen.js. And you don't write the JS part. So this is the import statement. And this is a component, so I'm going to use it in here. Oh, let's use it right here. Awesome project slash and then close the component and get rid of this. Now I'm going to show the demo working in Android. I have the emulator open. I'm running the command react hyphen native run hyphen Android. I've run this before so it goes pretty quickly. The first time you run this it'll take a long time and probably won't work but it'll take a long time. So mine worked pretty quick because I ran it before, and here it is. So it pops up the regular keyboard, but custom keyboard, custom keyboard. That goes back to the regular keyboard, just closes the keyboard, that opens it back up. Now I'm going to show the demo working in iOS. Click the play button to see it work. Okay, it probably won't work, but I got it to work. I already clicked the play button once, so it's going to go pretty quick. It's loading, and there it is. So here we have the Android and the iOS versions running side by side. So just to see the differences, the full screen button does not work on Android, but it does work on iOS. Also, on iOS, the reset button closes the keyboard. On Android, the reset button changes to the default keyboard. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you give this video an upvote. Thanks for watching.